man, 2023 was, uh, was crazy. Um, I got married that year, um, to my beautiful wife that I've been in a relationship with for, um, probably around 10 years now. And, uh, we also, uh, had my son and he's like 10 months going on, you know, 11 months, uh, in February, he'll be a year. And we switched over to doing product reviews here on the YouTube channel for almost two years. And it's just been really, really crazy to think that you guys have supported me throughout this journey, switching over from doing gaming content to, you know, product reviews and everything and actually sticking around, liking the videos, commenting, all the positive comments that I've seen. Of course, there's going to be, you know, negative comments and stuff, but, um, it's crazy to me to, to see the the little bit of success that I have been seeing, uh, you know, getting over a thousand subscribers, almost to 1200 subscribers now, and uh, being almost to the point to where we can monetize the YouTube channel. Um, we're at like 1700 something uh, watch hours, we need 3000 in order to monetize the channel. I'm not expecting once I can monetize my channel that I'm going to get like an influx of money and it's going to be crazy and everything. It's, it's not that it's just kind of like a goal, you know what I mean? Um, because I've been doing fairly, I would say well for myself as far as being able to work with companies, even though here on the channel, uh, I pretty much talk, you know, freely about a product that I receive. Um, none of my product reviews have been scripted really as far as from a actual company. Um, when I first started out doing product reviews, I was a little bit uncomfortable, I would say on camera. So I sounded like kind of robotic, I would say, because I really wanted to um, make sure that I covered points. So I would have like a monitor or my cell phone or a laptop or a printout or something like that um, to make sure that I hit those tips and everything. And I was like reading lines and stuff um, to make sure. So it made it really awkward. And that's when I realized, hey, I can't do scripts, you know, um, especially with having racing thoughts and mental disabilities. Um, for those who are new to the channel, I am a disabled veteran, 100% disabled veteran. I just recently got that in um, 2022 as far as uh, being, I would say, 100% permanent in total um, being seen, I guess, by the rest of the world, even though all my sy symptoms and um, evidence was there since I got out of the military in 2013. Um, it took me nine years, almost 10 years to get, I guess, the government to realize that, hey, this person is uh, mentally unhinged and uh, cannot find gainful employment or sustain employment, period. Um, which obviously, you know, weighed its toll on my life and my life. And, you know, gaming was my escape. Making content was my escape. And for me to, you know, justify me sitting there playing video games, doing content creation for hours, um, I needed to, you know, show some progress, I would say, with what I've been doing. And doing gaming content wasn't it. And it took me longer than I would have liked to realize that, you know, my unique perspective um, due to me having mental issues and stuff and being able to overanalyze things and be hyper vigilant. And um, it was just not suited for gaming. It was more so suited for product reviews because I would review like weapons and destiny or do DLCs and uh, reviews and stuff like that. And I always would get a whole bunch of hate because um, I was not infatuated with the game or enthralled with the game as other people were. I was looking at stuff critically and breaking stuff down even just on a just generic level, not even an, on a scientific level or a complicated level. And people just didn't like it. Um, and I noticed like that my critiques and stuff like that were warranted. It was just that. I was in the wrong place as far as uh, being able to put out videos on YouTube and get the actual, um, I would say, feedback and viewership that I wanted. So like I said, the the place that I belonged was doing product reviews. Um, who would have known that that stuff would have translated better over to doing, you know, um, product reviews as far as analyzing things and, you know, being 100% honest and just 
hearing people's opinions or whatever versus your opinions and what you think and and everything because when people use their money to to buy things they want the truth they want to know if it's going to be worth their money they want to know the ins and out facets and stuff like that they don't want to get that whole cars salesman um vibe that a lot of content creators nowadays um just go with and it's been super interesting i would say from a perspective of somebody who barely had any money um to their name because they weren't able to work and they still wanted to get things for you know doing content creation and all the money you know was pretty much gone in their bank account they made it had like 20 bucks to their name 50 bucks 100 bucks to their name or whatever every month and that's it and they wanted to get stuff for their setup or you know stuff for live streaming and they're watching videos from people on products and they're like oh i can't wait to get this that and the third and then you know they finally get it and they realize you know it was a mistake or all these headaches and frustrations come from because the persons that they watch uh do reviews on you know different uh, products and stuff like that from different sources uh they realize that these people are lying to them and that's what i realized when um i was looking at a lot of products before you know i got my 100 percent uh, disability and uh, my back pay and all that stuff and i was able to get like uh cameras and stuff like that several of them um i realized that a lot of content creators that i was watching uh while that was taking place that they were just lying they were just backing the company they were protecting the company from any hate or any negativity that the companies would receive about products or software or anything like that and i was like where are the actual content creators who are here for the consumer or here for the you know the person that's behind watching the video wherever behind the screen um who's protecting those people who is protecting their money their wallets and stuff like that um because like i said even some content creators who are you know have over a million subscribers or even over a uh, hundred thousand subscribers and some of them who are you know even lower than that um they get these big premium brand name companies that have been in the industry um whatever field they're in who have been in there for a, for a minute uh, these content creators, when they get reached out to the, from these companies, they are scared to, uh, I would say, deface or um, bash the companies or something like that because they're afraid that that company is going to retaliate by blacklisting or um, saying pretty much that we won't work with you anymore in the future because you talked bad about our product. Instead of just like, hey, this person gave the honest review, um, we need to go back to the drawing board or go back and fix our product you know maybe the software needs to update firmware update or something like that maybe needs to be worked on a little bit more maybe we need to go to the people who put our product together and um we i would say go back to the drawing board on how we put the components together or something like that like companies don't like it and i understand like you put your hard-earned money uh, time effort you know different teams are working together to put out a product and then you put it out thinking like it's good and then you know you got several people on the internet making reviews um and it's affecting you know your product sales because they're saying that the product is bad for whatever reason and i completely understand that from like i said a company standpoint but at the same time if you're reaching out to people to do reviews and you're paying them or you're sending out a product for free or something like that and the person's not giving you honest feedback how are you as the company going to improve when you make another iteration or you make a similar product or go out and make other products um you just gonna think and assume that you know your best your thing is best like since like sliced bread is the next best thing and that's what i noticed with a lot of content creators i could name off the top of my head several of content creators out there who do this who actively every time they review a product and a lot of them are well known especially in the um more so in the gaming and streaming space um and i've said multiple times multiple companies names that probably have me on their blacklist that probably would never work with me no matter how big i get or never partner up or anything like that which is fine because some of them i wouldn't want to partner up just because of uh the uh i would say the amount of disrespect they have to uh a consumer's wallet time 
or, or anything like that because a lot of them just make really bad products and they will say they're you know the premium brand for streamers or content creators or something like that they'll say some nonsense marketing speak um, and it turns out their products is riddled with a lot of software issues um, jankiness um, they're you know charging two or three four times the price um, of their product what it should cost if their product should cost less than a hundred dollars they're charging 200 or over a hundred dollars period um and it's just like they're getting away with it because there's so many content creators that they send out these curated packages to because they know that they're going to talk good about them and they know they have an influence that's why you know we as content creators are sometimes referred to as influencers because we're influencing people to purchase certain things and they know that that's why they sent out uh, certain care packages to certain people because they know that these people are going to give you know glowing reviews regardless if the if the if the product that they got sent out is literally a piece of doo-doo they're just gonna sit there and be like you know this is the best pal of doo-doo i've ever seen in my whole entire life and it's just like why and then the only time you will see people actually give uh, negative reviews is when a company is just pretty much genuinely thought of as having bad products from like I would say the majority of people out there they would just automatically assume like you know people think this company you know doesn't make the best products in this area so if I cover a product in this area you know it would make it seem like I actually do give bad reviews but it's like it's common sense like a lot of people don't like Logitech webcams because they're advertised as being really good when in all honesty anybody takes a, even a, a a quarter of a second to look at a, a logitech webcam they know the sensors are old and they're bad and the general consistency is don't use a uh, logitech webcam but a lot of people still use the c920 because you know that's all they could really afford it's around 20 to 60 bucks depending on where you find it and um there but the sensor is so old and it looks really bad in comparison to what's out there nowadays um you can find a relatively cheap i would say 4k 30 webcam out there that's going to again be 4k for less than 100 uh 200 um and a lot of people won't spend money on that they'll just go ahead and get the logitech because it's you know tested and it's been out for a long time um but the sensor is still bad but people will still you know say hey you know avoid logitech cameras everybody already knows that um, when it comes to razor product that company is kind of like in between where a lot of people know that razor products are pretty bad the software is always pretty bad everybody says the same thing about it or wherever it's nothing new so when somebody covers a razor product or wherever and they say a nitpick or a negative about it is the software it's kind of the general consensus that you know that's how it is but when it comes to other companies like premium brands like elgato which i've you know harped on multiple times on the channel and gave uh negative thoughts and opinions of their products uh, which are all, all true and valid um a lot of people don't ever really talk bad about elgato a lot of them are just elgato pro uh i would say partners or they actually you know want to work with the company for whatever reason um and they you know want to feed off of the community people thinking but if you look at a lot of comments or whatever from people who are not necessarily like gaming content creators and you look at comments from people who are just you know consumers period everybody always says or in like certain fields like when they came out with the acoustic panels if you looked at a lot of people who worked as a sound engineer and did do acoustic work and stuff like that a lot of them said the materials and stuff from the elgato acoustic panels or wherever they were upcharging people two to three times the price of how much the actual acoustic panel should cost um, but nobody was really saying anything there's several channels out there who have you know grilled um elgato products uh and rightfully so um but because of their influence in their numbers elgato still sends them products because they want people to review them or wherever but very rarely um, will you see a company actually kind of do that it just depends on the space that that content creator is in um, but nine times out of 10, majority of people, when like when the beacon mic came out, if anybody knows the fiasco that happened with Eth Ethos Vox and everything like that, and then you had the Gold XLR incident or wherever as well, and in tandem with that, um, a lot of these companies are upcharging, you know, uh, like I said, 
one to two times sometimes in some cases like road and and everything like that um dropping their all white uh, bundles and stuff like that or their content creator bundles um from even like dji the osmo pocket three all these companies are are literally stealing company uh money from the consumer from you guys and that's why i got into content creation and that's why i've been doing what i have been doing for so long um as far as getting into two years of doing it because i realized all this i kind of seen it more so before this whole wave of content creator bundles and packets and stuff came out um it's been slowly getting into that and over the years and months and stuff like that we've been kind of slowly getting to that point every now and then a company might do that be like this is the best one for content creators or for whatever people are trying to do and then because it's for content creators or wherever and get the product to actually work the way it's supposed to they charge you an extra 100 to 200 dollars sometimes 300 i think the road one base one or wherever it's like 500 to 700 dollars or 600 dollars and then the content creator pack or wherever to actually have it all set up it's like a thousand dollars and that's like the content creator pack like that's only for like the top one percent that's for companies and businesses and stuff like that a lot of companies are just out of touch with the fact of content creators out there are come come from all walks of life a lot of content creators out there don't have you know five hundred dollars to spend most of them can barely afford you know the sony zve 10 that i'm shooting on right now um you know six hundred dollar camera and and that's pretty much it you know what I'm saying? And they need to spend their money wisely and they need to see a, a can this product, is there a cheaper version out there that can get me by? And that's why I've liked working with certain companies. I've turned down a lot of companies um, this year, except for a few that I purposely did, uh, you know, take on or wherever to um, show that, you know, maybe going a little bit too cheap in some instances is not the play to do and there's some certain products that i purchased even though like let's say i'm partnering with fine fine i did cover the s uh c3 by myself you know what i'm saying i purchased it with my own money or whatever and i went ahead and reviewed it they didn't ask me to do it you know what i'm saying so i still you know again purchase stuff for my own money i still review stuff or whatever from the perspective of we have to give people an educated uh I would get, I guess, an educated way of thinking about things and making sure that they're making an educated assumption and guesses or wherever when it comes to using their money to purchase stuff so they're informed on, is this product worth the money? Is there a better option out there that will work better for me or work just the same as this $500 item, $1,000 item? Can I buy something that's sub $200 or $100 or wherever and get you know like i said the, the job done or the point across or whatever it is and people need to know about that stuff because like i said there's it's getting to the point to where there's too many content creators out there um in general and there's too many content creators out there that would do anything or whatever to get the attention of a brand name or whatever because with that brand is for some reason to them is synonymous with you know getting a whole bunch of viewership and getting a whole bunch of exposure for themselves so when they receive something and they know for a fact that what they have in their hand is trash again they'll praise it till the sun comes up because uh, they don't want to get blacklisted which again means that you know the company will no longer work with them other companies will see what they did to this company and wherever and talk bad about their product or wherever and they would assume that if they give them a product or wherever they'll get the same treatment so they'll avoid that content creator entirely and then that content creator will have to go out their way and spend you know their hard-earned money and be behind on covering something new because they didn't get it before it was released and that's the game that you know product reviewers and content creators are playing is play nice with the company you know butter them up and stuff like that suck up to them whatever brown nose whatever you want to call it to a company in order to receive products early because if you don't and you cover them like two three months later um you've done missed the influx of viewership and all that stuff and the companies know this you know what I'm saying they're taking advantage of it that's why when you see certain companies send out products to only a certain certain content creators that know 
that the content creator would be like, they didn't pay for a review. You know, they didn't, they didn't, I didn't sign any contracts. They don't see the video before it goes live, all that stuff or wherever. And it's an unreleased product. The reason why the company still send it out to them because they know, again, that that person is going to butter them up. They don't have to pay that person for a review. They don't have to pay that content creator or sign a contract or anything like that. They already know they they got the content creator on a leash. You know what I'm saying? They already know that that content creator is going to brown nose them. That's just how it goes. So unfortunately, that's where I came in, you know what I'm saying? Throughout 2023 and then going 2024, I'm just going to remain focused. I'm going to give you guys, again, just my honest opinions, my honest thoughts or whatever, regardless on if I work with big companies or not, every company is going to be under a microscope. Every company is going to get the same uh, treatment. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys my honest opinions, my honest thoughts or whatever. I don't care, again, if I'm blacklisted or wherever. I don't care if I have to go back and start, you know, buying even more products at, with my own money. Uh, there's been times where I've emailed companies, like I said, multiple times and just told them, hey, I'm not going to work with you or, you know, just don't even respond because, again, they're expecting this butter up and brown nose or whatever from a content creator and they're like hey just because you have you know barely a thousand subs or wherever that means we can manipulate you into being our golden goose that only talks good about us and everything and like i said i've just blasted companies completely and then i'd be like hey here's the review and they never message me back they never ask for another you know partnership collaboration or anything like that and it's like it's not my fault you know what I'm saying? If you make a good product and I and I think it's good or at least um, a thing that people should look into possibly getting or something like that, then I'm going to go ahead and do that. But you released a product out into the public. I should be able to criticize it, not, you know, hide imperfections from people. Because, again, at the end of the day, if you do go out and purchase it, you're going to, you know, feel that is trash, cheap, whatever. You're going to have the headaches and stuff like that. And then you're going to look at me and be like, never watching one of your videos again. I don't I don't want that. I want you guys, again, to have the informed decision on buying products, because, again, when I barely had any money and I wasn't doing good and I was just starting out or whatever, I wish more people would have been honest and truthful about certain products that I ended up purchasing. And it's like now I'm stuck with this, like certain products I did end up returning, but it's like. I kind of wish that I would have waited or, you know, at least did a little bit more research. So when I did encounter problems or issues, I knew how to deal with it or I knew that, you know, this product was going to come with some headaches again. Hopefully that kind of makes sense about what I'm trying to do um, on this channel and everything. And again, thank you guys for over a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much for, you know, supporting me and what I'm doing here on the channel. Um, and hopefully you guys continue to have a squid-tastic day. I know this video is kind of random or whatever. There's no no script to it. Again, I don't really do those. Um, I just wanted to kind of sit down and tell you guys why I do what I do. And again, going into 2024, it's just going to be focused. I'm going to be focused on, like I said, doing products and stuff like that. Still giving you guys 100% my thoughts and opinions, um, no matter what product it is from whatever company. With that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. Deuces, everybody. 2024.